I want to share with you this morning from Psalm 73, from Psalm 73, the New Living Translation, uh, again, Psalm 73. I learned while in seminary not to read um, a lot of scripture when you're preaching. Uh, this morning, it just doesn't work. So you're going to have to indulge me for a moment. Um, my homiletic instructors would probably have a fit, but... Um, uh, but I, I want to share, I, I, just couldn't, I just couldn't give you half of this. So um, I, I want to share verses 13 through 26 with you. I'll read quickly because I talk fast. But I want you to, to really share, with, share this with me. Psalm 73, I'll start with verse 13 from the New Living Translation. Psalmist Asap says, he writes, Did I keep my heart pure for nothing? Did I keep myself innocent for no reason? I get nothing but trouble all day long. Every morning brings me more pain. If I had really spoken this way to others, I would have been a traitor to your people. So I try to understand why the wicked prosper. But what, but what a difficult task it is. Then I, then I went into your sanctuary, O oh God, and I finally understood the destiny of the wicked. Yeah. Truly, you put them on a slippery path and send them sliding over the cliff to destruction. In an instant, they are destroyed, completely swept away by terrors. When you arise, O oh Lord, you will laugh at their silly ideas as a person laughs at dreams in the morning. But then I realized that my heart was bitter and I was all torn up inside. I was so foolish and ignorant, I must have seemed like a senseless animal to you. Yet, I still belong to you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, leading me to a glorious destiny. Whom have I in heaven but you? I desire you more than anything on earth. My health may fail and my spirit may grow weak, but God remains the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. Oh my God, y'all, y'all, man, may be seated. I told y'all this is so simplistic. Uh, um, I want to share for a few moments, if you pray with us, um, pray with us, just, man, people are missing church today, so you got to turn the person behind you and simply say, this is why I still go to church. No, no, y'all had no enthusiasm behind that at all, but that's where we are. This is why I still go to church. This is interesting because we're at a moment in life where church life has undergone a tremendous metamorphosis, a change. Sunday, the day decades ago that work would cease, and corporate worship would launch itself into a new beginning. There was a time when we didn't have cable and we couldn't watch the games until later. On channels three, 10 or 13, and sometimes 27. That there was a time when we didn't have to compete with getting our sons and daughters to AAU practice and games on Sunday, traveling all over Hampton Roads and the Commonwealth to make sure they exercise their athletic ability 
on the field. There are moments when we did not have to challenge ourselves to simply stay home in comfort, to watch the local preacher on streaming live, or simply go to YouTube and pop in an old sermon that makes us comfortable where we are. Church has changed. It has gone through such a tremendous change that there are people who don't see an urgency to be consistent in their time with God. It has changed so much that there are churches actually closing, boarding up their doors because there are people who are simply done with the church, tired of having to dress up, but yet their souls were broken. Tired of going to a place where people gathered, but there was no real fellowship. Tired of simply acting ritualistically about God and about church. I submit to you today that things have changed. but God is still constant. I want to talk to you a moment today about the real need real need why we should still go to church. Perhaps we should miss a day of work, but we're too afraid of missing a paycheck or a partial paycheck that we would save our sick days until we count them up to some 60, 70, 80 days. I, 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 I want to just talk, don't want to make this any more advanced than it really is, times have changed. Times have changed. We no longer have choir lofts behind us. We have been prompted to remove the chairs because we didn't want people sleeping while we were streaming. <laughs> times have changed. Times have changed, times have changed. People feel that church is just routine. There's nothing relevant. We hear the same words when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. We hear the same words week after week. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It becomes so routine because they have no passion. It becomes routine because there is no engagement. It becomes routine because not only is there no passion, but there is no compassion. No compassion to help others seek Jesus. Church has become a place where the preacher has became or started to gleam and stardom and fame and Facebook likes rather than faithful posturing before God. Are y'all still with me? It has changed. But I submit to you again that it's only routine, it's only casual when you have no desire to be intimate. Intimacy requires two active participants. God desires to work with you. I'm going to take my time today, y'all. God desires to accompany you on the journey that he has called you to. But you become bored. Stagnant. The writer engages us in a conversation of transparency. His name is Asap. Asap was one of three Levites commissioned. I'm, I'm going to where y'all just stay with me. He was one of three Levites commissioned by King David to be in charge of the sanctuary and especially the sanctuary choirs. 
officially his staff designation was the assistant minister of music. ASAP is in a prime position to, to notice the demeanor not only of God, but he's able to notice the posture or demeanor of those who declared that God was good. Mm. He was in a prime position not only to hear the praise and the worship and to teach them how to praise and what to say, but he is also in a position to see the hypocrisy of the wicked, the wastefulness of the worshiper, and seemingly no consequence for the wicked. He finds himself now in a position where he is questioning his commitment. Should I continue? Is this worth my time? Have I chosen the right temple? Or is this something that I can simply say goodbye to? It has become easier to say goodbye to the church because I don't think many of us realize what the church really is. You know, Pastor Booth, pray for me. It is, it is it's, it's easier for us to disconnect but not understand how that disconnect is causing hardship on the rest of the body. Angry, you're frustrated that you remove yourselves from ministry because the pastor irritated you or convicted you enough to make you stay home. We find ourselves in moments, church, where we don't think that church is really required in 2019. There are no absolutes. God didn't mean what he said in his word. We have gotten to a place where we reinterpret the interpreter. Y'all, 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 okay, y'all, y'all, y'all help me, help me. I'm just, it's, it's simple. It's, uh, this, this, this psalmist is at a place where he is troubled. If you look at the verses, verse 13 says he's having a conversation with God because he understood that he ought not have levels of a conversation with people who can't handle his level of criticism. Look at verse 13. Y'all help me. Verse 13, he says, Did I keep my heart pure for nothing? Did I keep myself chaste for no reason? Did I, did I keep myself innocent for no reason? Did I keep myself innocent for no reason? He was known. He was popular. He could have done some things to simply satisfy his lust. But the word says he kept himself pure. He kept himself innocent. Don't sleep, y'all, y'all with me. It's, it's, come, it's coming. He kept himself innocent, but now he's asking, uh, uh, are my, were my prayers for naught? Was, was my participation in the local assembly and ministry purposely? Did, 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 I, did I do it and now have nothing to show for it? Y'all help me, y'all help me. He's in a place now where it was troubling that all that he had done does not seem to be worth where he was. He says, I, I tried to understand why the wicked prosper. But I didn't understand why good things happen to mean people. Y'all, y'all, stay, stay with me. Um, I, I, I didn't understand why, why God doesn't quickly revenge those who have a lying tongue against the righteous. Why, why does it look like others are getting away with almost everything? But God chastises us over something simple. These are, these are some questions I believe that all of us will ask at some point in time 
is the church relevant? Do I need to continue my fellowship in order to be a worshiper? I can worship from home. I can, I, I can, I can worship from bedside Baptist. I can stay where I am and just have a good time at home. I can drink a beer and listen to T.D. Jakes. I can simply go and eat what I want to eat while listening to Joel Osteen. I can simply stay home and encourage myself in the Lord. Y'all, y'all help me. This, ah, this, y'all, he, he is troubling him and it says that he, if he had really spoken this way to others, he would have been a traitor to his people, which means that, Lord, I didn't want to put my burdens on them. So I, as a worshiper, I, as a leader, sat quietly by but dying. Oh, y'all help me. Here it is, this question that I believe that we have to ask ourselves on this Sunday. Are we doing all of this for nothing? Is there a reason why I submitted myself to this level of scrutiny? Join the ministry, but they don't call when I'm absent. Is it all for nothing? I don't seem to get the benefits out of what I am contributing. I'm giving more than I'm getting. I speak, but they don't speak back. Those who are doing evil, those who are doing wrong, seem to be at least having a good time doing it. I'm worshiping. I'm on my knees crying to God. Father, I stretch my hands to thee, but yet my body is still wracked with pain. I'm struggling to pay health insurance and I'm praying daily, but those other people seem to have everything together. My car won't start, but, but I'm praying in the morning, I'm praying at lunch, I'm praying at night. But, but this car just won't work right. What's going on? Why, 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 why are bad things happening to those who try to do right? And I'm grateful, church, that he kept it to himself, but he was open with God, and God is a safe place. And y'all, y'all help me, help me. Y'all please help me. He, he got to a place where he said, I, I've been doing these things, been faithfully attending. I've been sharing your word. I've been abstaining from lustful desires, but yet the wicked still prosper. He saw the ungodly life as a good life. They seemed at ease without any conscience. They would say anything about anybody, but yet rise to worldwide fame. They were mean and callous, but yet it seemed as though they were elevated on every turn. They got the promotion when I was there 20 minutes earlier. Why, Lord? Why? 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 He felt like his faithful life was a waste of time. Okay, can anybody be real? He felt like going to church and hearing sermons week after week was just a waste of time. He was, he was saying, the songs we sing don't mean much to me now. Even though I am the associate minister of music, I, I don't feel what I'm singing. <sighs> I, don't, I don't get nothing out of the words I'm reciting. I'm a preacher, I'm an usher. I stand by the door ushering people in, but yet I'm standing there as a corpse. I'm dead in my praise and dead in my worship. I, I don't, can't find the reason, can't find the reason to, to keep pushing. I push and push, but nothing seems to change. I don't know, maybe I'm talking to about two or three of y'all. Maybe it's just a few of y'all here. But he felt that what he was doing was just a waste of time. He was able to see 
now that I've been doing all of this, God, but I, I don't have anything to show for it. Let's, let's look at these verses. I just want you to look at these verses because he says, so I, so I, 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 I tried, verse 16, I tried to understand why the wicked prosper. I, I tried to make sense out of nonsense, but I couldn't on my own. But then in verse 17, it says, then, y'all, y'all help me. Y'all, see, all, all that build up just for this one statement. But then I went into your sanctuary. <laughs> and I finally understood the destiny of those of wicked. Y'all help me. I'm, I can shout right now. Y'all help me. Uh, uh, he, he said, I, I thought about missing worship and showing up just on the first and third Sundays, but, but when I entered, when I went in your sanctuary, <laughs> I, I want to just share this with you, and I, I got about 10 minutes and not even that much time, but the, 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 the church itself is not one individual. We, we, we have somehow misled congregants to think that you are the church by yourself. You are not the church by yourself. The church is attached to the body. <laughs> and if you detach yourself from the church, you detach yourself from the body. <laughs> Y'all help me. And if the body is unworthy of your presence and your attention and your giftedness, if you cannot reconcile your dislikes because of God's calling over your life, then you become a hazard and must be cut off from the body. Y'all oh, help me, you. You, you can live, you can, y'all help me, y'all help me. You, you can live without one leg, but you got to limp. You can grab with one hand, but you can't clap. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you got eyes, but if you've been blinded, you can't, you can hear, but you can't see. So something is actually missing when you disconnect yourself because you don't like what someone said. I told y'all it was simplistic, very simplistic. You, you got mad, you stayed home because you were frustrated with church folk. Let me, let me say, because if you are part of the church, if you are part of the body, you can't get mad and then stop yourself from going forward. No matter how hypocritical people in a church may seem, it's still the best place because it's still full of potential. I, I get it, I, I get it. I told you I didn't know where God was going. Uh, uh, it, it's still the best place. You gotta deal with some folk who are in the same ministry but don't speak to you but they're still part of the body. And if you hate the body, you can't appreciate the head of the body. The Bible says the head of the church is Jesus. So when you disown, disconnect, disavow yourself from what Jesus has placed a stamp of approval over, what you do is negate the very cross that he bore. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. Oh God, I know, I know, I know, I know, I hear you, I hear you, but church folk get on my nerves, but guess what? You are part of them. I, I, I mean, I, I got to put the notes away. I gotta, can I just look at this thing? And he says, I, I went into the sanctuary, oh God, and I finally understood that my observation was my, or my revelation was being blocked, blocked by my observation. 
I was looking at the wrong stuff when I was supposed to have been looking at you. I was observing others, but not worshiping you. I was critiquing others, but not critiquing myself. Oh man, y'all, y'all help me, y'all. Mm. I didn't know these things until I went into this. So, so what, what happened? Because, because something had to happen when he actually went into the sanctuary. No, 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 y'all, he, he's, he's the associate minister of music. So just playing wasn't enough. So on this particular day, something had to happen in the church or the sanctuary that would make him see a revelation that he was missing because of his misguided observation. You keep looking at folk, you're going to miss Jesus. <laughs> You keep looking at folk and you're going you're gonna to quit tomorrow or quit this afternoon and never return. I don't come to church because I'm looking at you. I come to church because I'm just like you. I, I may not do everything you do. You may not do everything I do, but all of us are just alike. We need Jesus. We need the Lord. We need to be forgiven. We need to repent. We need to be healed. We need to be made whole. We need to be sanctified. We are justified through his blood. We, 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 we know that God hears us. Are you frustrated? You mad? You're going to sit here and act like God is going to die because you don't praise him. The only one losing out is you. Because God is already God and God is self-sufficient and God is all-knowing and God is all-powerful and God is all-loving and God is already perfect. Praise releases your levels of appreciation and thanksgiving. It lets God know that you know that God has done something great in your life. I, I, I gotta come on. It says I, I, I went, I really, I went into the sanctuary. I, I just didn't go in the building, but I went in the sanctuary. I went past the doors. I went past the post. I went into worship. I went into your presence. I didn't just get in the building. I got in your presence. I didn't, I didn't just hang around the cross. I allowed the blood to cleanse me from all of my unrighteousness and to forgive me for all of my filthy thoughts. He, he had a revelation because he's changed his observation. Can I, get, can I just run through this real quickly? I got to get you all out of here. It says, truly, you put them on a slippery path. Now God reveals to him, don't, don't, don't envy those who are doing wrong. Don't envy those who are lazy. Don't envy those who are trifling. Don't envy those who who, who, who seem to look like they're prospering because you can't measure prosperity by what they drive, by what they wear, or how they talk. Because there are some folk who didn't finish elementary school called grandma who could pray the hell out of the devil. There are some people, there are some grandmas, some grandfathers who did not know how to put a, a letter together, but they could call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and the demons would start to shake in their boots. There are some people who did not have a fifth grade education, but they knew that Jesus loves me. This I know. Why? For the Bible tells me so. They knew it in their hearts. Truly, you put them on a slippery path. I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to just stay here. I don't want to stay on the enemy because he said, in an instant they are destroyed, completely swept away by terror. Verse twenty-one. It says, "When you arise, O oh Lord, you will laugh at their silly ideas, at the person who laughs and dreams in the morning." But then, in verse twenty-one, as I want to get to, then I realized that my heart was bitter. Oh, good God. It wasn't so much about the evil. It wasn't so much about the hypocrisy. I was envious of what I saw them getting. Oh, 
<laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't want to tell anybody because it would have come out. It would have, it would have been explained that I wanted what they had, but I was settling for what God gave me and I didn't want to settle anymore. <laughs> and they said, this is something. He said, then I realized that it wasn't really them. It was me. I allowed my envy to turn me into being bitter. And I was all torn up. Y'all get this inside. I blame others for where I allowed my mental state to be. I blame the church. I ain't getting nothing from the church. I'm not going no more. I blame them for not being honest with myself about what I wanted that I wasn't getting. This ain't for y'all today. Okay, it's for two or three. It's for two or three other people, and here it is. I, I, I was bitter, but I couldn't tell nobody, but I just sat there, and I died on the vine. Just because you claim to have a relationship doesn't mean your relationship is not dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I ain't got much time. It says, when, 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 when Lord, Lord, I, I realize, I realize you open my, see, in the church, in the sanctuary, when you really worship, God does not reveal who they are. God reveals who you are. He thought God was just going to deal with their stuff, but God says, I got their stuff and I got your stuff. I ain't going to just deal with their stuff and let you get away. You got some envy. You got some bitterness in your heart and I'm coming around to you. I, I wish you would just tap your neighbor's neighbor. He's coming back around to you. He says, verse 22, I was so foolish and I was ignorant. I must have seemed like a senseless animal to you, oh God. But yet, this is why I still go to church. Yet, I still belong to you. This is why I still go to church. You still hold my right hand. No, notice, notice what he said, you hold my right hand. Right hand, right hand that notes that I'm doing good, I'm doing what is right. You hold my right hand by revealing what my left hand has been doing. You hold me because of righteousness. You hold me, Lord God, because you love me. You hold me because your presence means a lot. You hold me by my right hand. Oh, hallelujah. You guide me, Lord, with your counsel. I would have been messed up, Lord, but you guided me with your word. You guided me, Lord, with your principle. You led me to a glorious destiny. Oh, God, here it is, church. When, then he says, who? Where, where else am I going? Where? Where shall I go that the Lord's presence is not? If I make my bed in hell, you are there. He says, whom have I in heaven? But, but you can understand what he's saying now. He recognizes, Asap recognizes that I've had some ancestors to leave us and go with you, God, but they can't help me understand revelation. He says, whom have I have in heaven but you? Then he changes, Lord, I desire you more than anything on earth. Like the desert needs the rain. Like the ocean needs the stream. I need you, Lord. Then he says, my health may fail and my spirit may grow weak, but God, you remain the strength of my heart and you are mine forever. This is why I still go to church. Thank 
you for joining us for today's message. If God is impacting your life through this ministry, join us in reaching others all over the world by investing today. You can give at grovechurchva.com slash giving. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more messages like this one.